So the next part of the story is always really difficult for me to tell. Um, it has never gotten any easier. And so what I think I'm going to do for this is show you guys a, a couple minute clip from the film. It's hard to share this news without overshadowing all the beauty of Zach Gorman, Becca's love and partner for the last five years. Just three weeks after our trip to Arizona, Zach journeyed forward into the great mystery. Strangely enough, he was flying, paragliding in Tucson. When Becca called that Sunday night, he had already passed on. Words can never describe how hard this has been. And I can only imagine what this feels like for his family and for Becca. Grief is a journey no one would choose. But one thing is certain, Becca has taught me more about courage in a couple of months than perhaps I've learned in my entire life. And it's because of her courage that we are here in Mongolia now. Whew, it's always hard to watch. So just like that, we're preparing for this huge trip and one of the closest people to us passes away. But somehow Becca decided that she still wanted to go to Mongolia and all of us unanimously agreed that if she wanted to go, no matter how bad she was grieving, that we would support that and we would still go do this trip. And, and so that landed us back in Mongolia. So yeah, we paddled about 500 kilometers through northern Mongolia. And like I said, in one of the most pristine and beautiful places I have ever, ever been. There were a couple different sections of the Onan that we paddled, but this upper section that you see here, we, the estimate we've gotten of how many people have seen it is 10. And the river is flowing completely unobstructed and with very, almost no influence from humanity. It's pretty incredible. This is one of my favorite photos because it, it gives the feeling of how magical that place was. We also encountered the Mongolian military. Try and remain calm. It's all good. And uh, Manji, this is one situation where you want a translator, for mm. sure. <laughs> so Manji and Amber first go off. And the rest of us were sitting there. We're just waiting. Be patient. And then we all get escorted away and no cameras. So we were held up for six hours in the military camp. I feel like we're a bit of excitement for them. You know, they don't see much action out there. <laughs> but they were making up excuses as to why we needed to be detained. We, we got to play some great games with the children all day. But uh, we, uh, this, at this uh, point here, this is, you know, we're back down the kayaks and they need to make sure we're not Russian spies. And funnily enough, it's the solar panel equipment you see there that they were the most worried about. And the reason why I'm taking an image right now, I've got the holding the camera down, and I casually just take the card out, put the yesterday's card in. So when they came over, they're like, oh, we need to look at your images. And I had to scroll through every single image on that card. So a good thousand images of just kayaking in pretty places. And thankfully did not get caught because uh, apparently Manji, he was telling us that we actually could have gone to jail. It turns out, we thought we had the right permits. We went through some logistics there in uh, Mongolia, like, you know, legal, and uh, we thought we did have the right permits, but they were telling us that we didn't. And uh, we could have had a very different outcome to that day. I don't think we really had any more dramas until uh, here's a lightning scenario. And we're camping on this river bar, and you can see the river splitting around us. And, you know, I start wading out further and further. It was quite shallow, and I'm like, this is amazing. So I start shooting, and I get my tripod because I wanted to get a lightning strike. And, you know, I wasn't really paying attention to how fast that storm was coming on. And suddenly, Amber and I were joking around, and then Amber's like, Crystal, uh, I'm not really <laughs> comfortable with you being in that water anymore. And I'm like, nah, it's all good. You know, just, just one more strike, and I promise I'll get out. Next thing, the loudest thunder just rips above us. And I'm sprinting out of that water as fast <laughs> as I could. And I threw the tripod down right beside the tent and we all ran for the willows because by the time I'd got out of the water, threw that tripod down, this lightning strike goes off just on the other side of the river, about 100 metres away. And I was like, ooh, f OK, this is serious. And we hid in the willows for a good two hours because what you can't see in this image to the left is there's a huge cliff that was the highest point in the area and the storm basically was attracted to that cliff and it would stay there raging above us for a couple of hours and we were trying to seek shelter and not get struck. <laughs> 